so you've already gotten a taste of this is a pretty remarkable person sitting here in front of you. He is a mystic, Someone else come in. <laughs> an alternative oh. healthcare practitioner, a master level martial artist, and a former Green Beret who has also had psychic experiences. His son passed away many years ago, and after his son crossed over, he had contact from him, which led this man of obviously varied interests um, on a search to find out what is really true. And he spent 15 years researching the forces that are above, within, and surrounding us all. I grew up in a blue collar family. My dad was a truck driver, a welder, and later he owned a trucking company, did reasonably well. But when I was about 10, I became uh, kind of a prodigy, is that the right word? In yeah. science. Prodigy? Oh, now here I've got a doctorate degree and all that, I can't remember the word. Yes, it's a prodigy. I became a prodigy in science. I've just proven now that how could I have been? So I, for some reason, I became a science geek. I, I don't know. I, I truly believe, guys, that we have free will in this world. But I also think we are guided through this world. We plan this stuff in advance, or somebody did. By the time I was in my mid-teens, became uh, very, very involved or excited by the idea of, of vital energy. The same thing that these ancients talked about. And by the time I was 16, I was studying martial arts. And by the time I was 18, I was heavily involved with Kung Fu, which I still am. And that's a central part of Kung Fu, is the belief in Qi, the vital energy prana. I call it the force because Everybody knows what that is, right? Thanks to, to uh, the Star Wars movies. A pretty close approximation of two, by the way. George Lucas actually hired someone to uh, get him up to speed on the, on, these, on the concept of a force and you know, psychokinesis and so forth. He did a real good job with it. The thing that still amazes me to this very day is how biased and political and opinionated the scientific field is. And I mean, to the, to the point of, it's just, it's, it's almost revolt. What I mean by that is, science uh, just flat out says, there's no God, no purpose, no soul, no vital energy, or they imply there's no purpose, I gotta hit myself. Uh, everything is what I've termed in my writings an evolutionary happenstance, and the bits of living tissue scattered throughout the stars are just a pure accident. And, and yet most people throughout history will, will not agree with that, and I certainly wouldn't, and probably most of us here would not. And I, I broached it some conferences and things I've been to, I said, well, you know, if that's the case, then, I mean, there's no purpose to anything that we do. Well, I, I didn't say that now. Well, sure, sure you did, you implied to them. The problem is, is science, and as uh, Richard Smoley, my editor at Quest, wrote the, the forward to the book, makes a very good point, it's become scientism, it's become almost a religion. And they're not open to new findings, they're open to maintaining the status quo. And I, I granted, granted, I can understand where they'd be upset if, if a person claimed to be able to perceive information from a distant source, or claimed to be able to, uh, using some undefined form of energy, move an object or change a, a random number generator or something. I can understand where they would be skeptical of that. They should be. That's their job to be that way. But what's sad is when the ev evidence becomes absolutely overwhelming, which we'll discuss in a little while, they're still that way. And in fact, they'll come out and say, there's nothing on this earth that you could show me or tell me that would make me change my mind. Well, then what the hell are you doing in the position you're in? Excuse me. Trying to hide the fact that I'm a redneck at heart. <laughs> and they control each other. And they, the way they control it is through funding. Anything new about that? Uh, denying tenureship, tenure, and, and, and professorships, I should say. But if, if uh, young fledgling scientists stray just a little bit outside of the mainstream, they tend to have problems with funding real quickly. And within philosophy, it's perfectly acceptable and expected within metaphysics to talk about God and the, and the existence of the soul, uh, the possibility of it, and, and whether we survive physical death. And all those are lively topics that are embraced. 
But in science, which is underpinned, as everything else is, by philosophy, it's, it's an area you don't want to stray into if you want to stay with the good old boys of the scientific crowd. <laughs>